Let's hop over to the phones. Gus taking time out of his busy schedule once again for us. Congressman Adam Kinzinger. Congressman, good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. How are you? We're terrific. Uh, How's everything going with you this morning? Oh, boy. It's, you know, I feel like, uh, what do I feel like? One-tenth of the weight as usual. <laughs> it was a good day last night for us. I feel personally pretty good. Yeah. Know? So, yeah, it's a good day. Couple of things. All right. We'll get to, uh, the you know, the big news involving you uh, from, uh, from the last week or so in just a moment. But let's get a reflection and some thoughts on uh, what we saw go down last night. I mean, it was big. It was, uh, you know, I, I think there's a number of lessons to learn. I, you know, we're probably not going to pull off New Jersey. I, I still have some hope we do, but I think the latest I saw, we're down just a smidge. Um, but, I mean, nobody even thought. I, we thought initially if we got within four points, that'd be huge. Um, obviously, uh, winning all the constitutional offices of Virginia is big. And I think what it shows is, you know, look, the, the Democrats, uh, you know, God bless their heart, but they keep thinking that spending more money and more money and more money is what the American people want. And I think we're getting to that point. You know, everything comes in cycles. We're getting to that point where the American people are like, you know, hey, yes, sometimes big government was able to kind of sell, you know, to the American people. But right now they realize the government's too big. They realize debt's too high. And I think Glenn Youngkin particularly was able to um, to take kind of a, like, I got to be honest, a, po- a, a, a post Trump message. I mean, he didn't deny Donald Trump, he did, but he didn't embrace him. And it was just kind of like, yeah, we can get, you know, morassed in that and in old grievances, but here's the real issue people care about. I think that's a winning message for the GOP is we move forward and we actually find the issues that people care about. Yeah, and uh, it, it doesn't it doesn't hurt one bit that his opponent basically dropped a depth charge in his own lap. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, parents, schools, decisions, pfft, you don't get that. Well, it, uh, that's the, not it, a winning message. It's not, and the amazing thing about that is that is, I think it goes to show how much, you know, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll be fair and say we don't fully understand what drives kind of liberal thinking, but it shows how much they don't understand what, you know, what drives American conservative thinking, which is like, you know, there's a mistrust for big government, and there's a real mistrust for... Um, you know, a government basically defining what your kids can and can't learn. And that just fed right into it. And he didn't really do anything to, to come out of that. He, I mean, obviously, he could have come out and said, look, that, I don't believe that. That was I, I said that inartfully. Let's move on. But he didn't, and, and it was a it was a blowout, you know, relatively speaking. Yeah, and uh, not and especially the way everything turned. I mean, you look a few weeks back, and those numbers did not look like that. And uh, then that thing gets dropped, and boy, things just whipped around on it. That's right, that's uh, right. And I think the other thing, the other message to the party, and I think this is the case when it comes to us when we look at you know senator governor in Illinois. Glenn Youngkin was not the kind of MAGA proof candidate. Um, no, nope. Glenn Youngkin was considered more the. I, I think actually MAGA is more the establishment now, so um, I won't say establishment, but more kind of the uh, the towards the moderate end of, of candidates. He's the only one that I think could have won that race, and, and uh, so I think it goes to show that to advance conservative principles, you know, we have to recognize where we are and put up the best candidates. You know, and and I also look at now the the, the same voters that uh, voted overwhelmingly for uh, Joe Biden in Virginia are now being called racist, bigots, idiots. Uh, yeah. That's interesting how all of that turned, especially when you consider who won the lieutenant governor's race, a very impressive woman named Winsome Sears. Yeah, yeah, and she talks about how she has experienced kind of reverse racism or, or racism of saying, like, you, in essence, can't be a Republican, et cetera. Um, I mean, that's, uh, she. you know, she's going to be... An important voice for our party going forward, I think. You know, I think the thing is, is this, I have talked to a lot of liberals that I know, like people that are kind of a little disaffected with their own party right now. And they're just saying, you know, look, they're right. In fact, I was talking to somebody last night, you know, just texting with him, and he's like, the Democrats, we have to quit playing identity politics. He said, you know, Republicans, you can agree with this or not. He said, Republicans are playing grievance politics, and we're playing right into it with identity politics. And and he goes, that's it's something that we just can't get away from. So, I agree. I think it's I think it's a matter of whichever party can can get past the temptation to relitigate old grievances and actually move forward and give people a future will be the party in charge for one time. It'll be interesting to see who snatches that mantle up and runs with that. Mm-hmm. Now, the big question, of course, uh, where are you going from here? I mean, the announcement made last week, uh, uh, leaving Congress, uh, not seeking re-election. We've got a redistricting thing. we got maps being drawn weirdly. we got a whole bunch of the variables into the mix. But let's get it from you. What, what, what do you got cooking? Yeah, so, uh, you know, what went into the decision is, look, I, 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 as you all know, you know, I'm, I'm a 
pretty outspoken about the party. And I, I love the Republican Party so much that I've just felt compelled to speak out because, to me, it's the party that actually should be optimistic, unifying, et cetera. And, you know, that gets fatiguing after a while, being one of the only few voices saying that. Um, I also recognize that, you know, if, if we win the majority, and I fully think we will, you know, is that going to change much? Where can I be most effective? Obviously, I have a baby coming. And then I think one of the big things is just, I got drawn in with, with Darren LaHood, and I, look, I, you know, I already went through, as you all remember, going through a fight with uh, Don Manzullo, yep. and I had said after that race, after that was over, I said, I will never go through a member-member Republican primary again. I won't, because it is like, it's like locking two brothers in a room and saying only one of you comes out alive. You know, yeah, you're going to fight, fight hard, but it's just every every swipe you take is is it, it makes you sick so well and you're doing oppo research for the other side at the same yeah, time totally and and so i looked at that and i go look you know i god is in control of my life and you know i have very strong faith that the lord directs my steps no matter how, how much i plan and you know this is kind of something where he shuts the door and that's fine with me i mean to be honest with you 12 years in the house that's enough but i am looking at the possibility of a Senate run, and, you know, I'm not going to rule out governor either. The problem is, the question is, do we want to put forward a candidate that's going to beat Pritzker, or do we want, want to put forward a candidate that's going to scratch our grievance itch better? I think that's a question for the party. I don't know. It will be hard. Look, it'll be hard in a governor's uh, race particularly, not so much Senate, for me to get through a primary when it's all about, you know, whatever the cultural battle of the day is. Well, let me tell you, if you actually want to beat J.B. Pritzker, there's, I think, one person that can do it, and that's me. And I'm not saying that arrogantly, but I know that I have a reach into the suburbs that no other candidate does. So we'll see. I mean, I'm also be happy to walk away. It's up to God and my wife to an extent. One of them more vocal than the other, I'm certain. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. God speaks quietly. She speaks loudly. Yes, <laughs> and that's the way it ought to be. Well, that's an interesting thing to consider because, uh, you know, uh, a governor's race and, uh, and uh, uh, a change of governorship and a change of uh, timber in this state is so desperately needed. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. And look, if I don't run for governor, I certainly will support a good candidate, but that's the thing. What last night showed, particularly I think in New Jersey, because that's even a, a stronger kind of correlation than Virginia. Virginia is a swing state. Is that on the right day, you know, um, a Republican can win, and it's going to take the Republican Party rowing together. Now I get a, a, a primary can be divisive, and it will be. That's fine, uh, but no matter who wins that primary, moving forward together. If it turns into, you know, uh, this person is not playing enough grievance politics or this person is playing too much or whatever, it's going to be tough. But we can do it, and uh, I'm not going to rule that out, nor the Senate, nor am I going to rule out, you know, living on a beach halftime. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> you know, the idea of worrying about whether the tide reaches your chair, the yeah. biggest problem of the day, yeah, doesn't that's seem all that, 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 that nice. awful either after sitting in Congress for 12 years. Yeah, that's right. That sounds nice to me, to be able to just sit out and be like, Man. It's whether or not I'm going to default on an empty margarita, and that cannot happen. <laughs> not a bad idea at all. Congressman, as always, I know how busy you are. I appreciate the time. I appreciate the candor this morning. We'll look forward yeah. to getting together again. You bet. Take care. That's Congressman Adam Kinzinger.